Hey guys, so I'll make a video about how I scale my miniatures to perfect 28 millimeter scale in Mesh Mixer. So I have my program open and I imported one of my models. And this happens a lot. You import a model and it is teeny tiny. A lot of times people, I've had people in the very beginning who I didn't know what I was doing, they'd message me and be like, hey, I opened it in Cura and it's not there. It's there, it's just really small. So in this case, go to edit, transform, and you'll see the dimensions here. It says size X, size Y, size Z. And you can tell it's one millimeter by 2.55. It's super freaking small. And it's rotated on its back. So for a lot of uh, modeling softwares like ZBrush, the axes are switched. I think it's like X and Y are switched. Anyway, so you can go to rotate X, put in 90, and you'll make your model upright. I probably should have done this after I made the model really big, but now when I scale the model up, you'll notice that she's standing upright and she's not on her back. So I know that the average model is about 32 millimeters tall. So I'll put 32 for right now. She looks all pixelated and weird. That's because Mesh Mixer is panicking. Just click accept and she will become a real thing. Mesh Mixer needs to think about this. There we go, a real thing. And you can tell there's no base on her yet. I'll get to that in a second. So I'm gonna go to um, analysis, measure. And this is really important. I learned this recently. So the type, you want to be this bottom left-hand corner for the type, direction being Y axis. Now, when I click on my model, you'll notice it's kind of pinned to her hip for some reason, which is like extremely not helpful. If you hold down the control button and then tap on her foot, so click on her foot, then that's your new anchor point. So control, click, new anchor point. I did not learn that by reading it online. I just struggled for a long time because I'm like, there's gotta be a better way. So now that I have an anchor point, I can go up to her eye level. I can see that's 29.8 millimeters. So 28 millimeter scale means the distance between the bottom of the foot to eye level. And that resembles a six foot tall man. So since she's a woman, I'll make her a little, and an elf, I'll make her a little bit smaller. So she's too big at 29 millimeters. I'm gonna make her like 27. So I can go into here, so edit transform, and then take my 32. And I mentioned I'm bringing her down about two millimeters and I'll try 30. Hit accept. It's really needing to think about except for today. <laughs> back to analysis, measure, control click, and then back to our eye level. And that's at 27.7, so it's barely smaller. I really don't like going too small because she's really slender. I wanna make sure she's not too fragile. So I'm actually gonna leave it like that for now because for resin printing, you actually get slight shrinkage. Fun fact, pretty much only a millimeter or two, but in this case, it really matters. So I tend to go on the bigger side and the smaller side, which is funny because I have people telling my models are too small all the time. That's because they have human proportions and they're not dwarfy or if that makes sense. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. I just like them being skinny, correct, doll-like <laughs> figurines. I don't like blowing up the arms and making their head really big. I want them to look elegant and pretty. Besides the point. So now I clicked on the pen and I'm going to my bases. I have a 25 millimeter base. It's already been measured out. I actually made that in SolidWorks. I don't use that anymore because I'm not going to school anymore, so I don't have a free license to use it. SolidWorks is very expensive, so what engineers use. So I hit on Edit, Transform, and I can drag this arrow over to position it to where she's in the center of her model. There we are. Now I noticed, like for example, um, this is going too far into her foot. And it kind of snaps, so I snap down here and it snaps up and it's too far up. So what you can do is you look at the upper left-hand corner of the screen where it says translate. You can fix that by actually manually entering in a value for translate Y. If the screen is blurry right now, I don't know how well my recording software is working. Just keep in mind, I click on edit, transform, and then translate Y. And you'll be able to see that in your software. That's Mesh Mixer pretty much hasn't updated that in any version of their software. All right, so I can see that that's connected to her foot, which is very good, can accept. Now this is the important part. So I have my object browser right here. If you can't find that, you can go to file and then um, pretty sure it's a file. No, it's view, isn't it? There we go, yeah, view. And then it says hide object browser. If you can't find it, it's a show object browser. Not a big deal. You can click on the base and then click on shift, hold that down, click on your model. So now both are highlighted. And then over here, it automatically goes to um, Combine, it's a different operation. Now that doesn't show up, that's because edit isn't clicked on. Maybe analysis clicked on, which isn't gonna help you. So make sure edit is clicked on and then click on combine. And now you have one solid piece. So the object browser is only showing one object now. And here you go. She's 
perfectly proportioned. Um, she'll print great. If you have any worries about the foot being too small, you can actually go in here. This is a little extra. Um, go to sculpt, change the brush to inflate, and then kind of like tap on her foot. I don't super recommend this. It'll deform your model a little bit, but it's causing it to have a greater surface area of contact. That makes sense. That's pretty extra. You don't need to do this. It doesn't always look the best, but it's another extra thing you can do if you want to edit your model really quick to make sure it's not too fragile and it's connected to the base all the way. And then finally, you click on export. I usually do STL format and then you can export to whatever you want to sound like. So awesome. Thank you guys for watching that. That's how you scale. Um, a miniature perfect 28 millimeter scale. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.